So, game update notes. April 1st, 2021. You know, we just had a patch the other day, guys. I'm surprised to see another one so soon. Living World. Guild Wars 2 Living World, the Ice Brood Fivaga. A little typo there. Episode 5, Champions, Chapter 4, Judgment Act 0 to the 366th power. Gordon vs. King Abaddon begins soon. Reach level 15 to gain the Spiked Choya Psionic Tonic and begin the non-sequential pseudo-optional honor system prelude. Now that has actually already started. Uh, let me quickly swap over to the Druid here and I can actually show you that. So if you log in on your character that is a above level 15 during this event, you can immediately, you'll get a little treasure chest in the bottom right corner that will give you the spiked Choya Psionic Tonic. As you can see here, this is all you need to begin the non-sequential pseudo-optional honor system prelude. Now, players who complete the Living World Season 3 episode Out of the Shadows will now automatically be recruited to the join the guild Dragon's Watch with the hero tag. All of your loyal character companions and Bram... All of your loyal companions... and Bram. Foreshadowing? I mean, if even they say it. We'll communicate with you through the chat panel, reducing the time required to take calls from timing. As guild leader, you will now be responsible for planning fun events and mediating interpersonal conflict beyond the living world story. Visit Orin in the Eye of the North to peruse her designs for a new guild emblem. I bet it's going to have the rainbow stuff all around it. If your guild slots are full, Dragon Watch will replace your personal novelty guild. Sounds fair. World Polish. Annual polishing has increased world shine by 14%. Nice, we could probably uninstall the DirectX 12 add-on now. After being driven out of the Celestial Challenge, excess hordes of hyenas now appear in various offense. They really had to put them somewhere. That's only fair. General. Added expiration dates to foods, ingredients, and other consumables. This might finally mean that I stop getting sent tens of thousands of zucchinis every day. I'm completely okay with this. Added new dragon call and response missions, which includes all of your favorite dragon-related songs, as well as brand new Deep Sea Dragon Shanty. You know, I haven't heard Puff the Magic Dragon in years. I'm looking forward to it. Instituted a wealth tax on all bank assets valued over 10,000 gold. Guild MM, I knew thee well. Players will receive a form via in-game mail for declaring their assets gained and lost over the past fiscal year. Dude, all I gotta do is get rid of my shock confusion and I'm fine. Uh, added a few more Elder Dragons. That's good, we were running low. We were running low. Several NPCs who were rude or dismissive towards you when you were a bright-eyed adventurer just making your way in the world would like to reach out and apologize. You don't owe them anything. This reminds me of Skyrim when you, uh, you know, you're like the dragonborn, you're the head of all the guilds, and you, you walk into town and they're like, hey, you joined the companions recently, right? I bet you carry the meat, and you're just sitting there in full Daedric armor, like... And then you kill them, and then reload the game. Fractals. Fractals are now recursive, smaller Mislock Observatory has been placed within each fractal. For further details, check the Fractal section of the Game Update Notes from April 1st, 2021. We'll have to look into that soon. Each Fractal has been updated for historical accuracy to feature the sublime Palawa Joko and his involvement- They forgot Ignatius. His full name is Palawa Ignatius Joko. It's like a pimp named Slickback. You say the whole thing. And his involvement in their events. Added a new Fractal instability. The Labyrinthine Horror. Oh, that's Steve from Halloween! You know, I've honestly been feeling like some of these fractals have been too easy. I think a skeleton with a chainsaw would, uh, would really, uh, spice it up. To increase variety of player choice in selecting Agony Resist values, there is now a daily rotation that adds to your Agony Resist based on the following bonuses. 
number of matching resist values, number of different resist values, number of matching positive and negative resist values, number of resist values that add up to 10, highest unique resist value in your party, and to compensate for the higher baseline agony resist, agony resist requirements for fractals over 20 have been increased by, like, a lot. I think if you add it up to 42, you'd be fine. Items! To help players keep their backpacks empty for new loot, a wipe inventory button has been added next to the compact button. Finally! I, I gotta tell you guys, I, I've been struggling with all this, and really, I've really been just wishing that right here, between deposit and compact, there was a button that just said nuke from orbit. And they've, they've heard my pleas. I'm so happy about this. Mounts! Added a quest to unlock Springer Mass- Kaylin, love the content you make and hope you will have a fantastic year and thank you for an awesome nine months. Who the hell was that? Okay. Mounts! Added a quest to unlock Springer Mastery 6, which allows your faithful Springer to be mounted and use its abilities in mid-air. You know, as someone who has all eight mounts, the Springer's the only one I never use. It's good to see it getting a buff. Fixed a bone scaling issue that caused the Raptor to be much larger than pocket-sized. As an Asura, this is fine. The rest of y'all can suffer. Profession skills. General. To respect quiet hours, shout skills may no longer be used between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. Good thing you renamed mine commands! Let's continue. Elementalist. Fixed an issue that allowed Elementalist to ignore the material component cost for certain spells. Yeah, you guys are gonna have to carry around that I am nude again, aren't you? Weavers can access an elemental loom to create brilliant but ephemeral tapestries. That's interesting. So now they're gonna have a uh, Weaver Tailor who's gonna be able to make stuff that no one else can. I like it. Good change. Good change. I remember if you played a gnome in EverQuest, you could tinker and other, other races could not. Turrets, gadgets, and gyros are now considered material component skills. You guys are gonna have to carry around some nuts and bolts. Engineers cannot use these skills unless they first craft the required item using a weaponsmithing station. Sounds completely fair to me. Engineers who leave turrets, gadgets, and gyros lying around when leaving a map will now be ticketed for littering. You know, honestly, I think weavers are bigger on being litter bugs with their leaving just some flaming swords all over the ground and causing forest fires, but, you know, we have to start somewhere. Guardian! To low- is this actually real? Doxies, why would you possibly think they would release fake patch notes? Of course this is real. Guardian. To lower option overload following the introduction of the Skyscale and new Elder Dragons, Dragon Hunters will need to more specifically select their hunting targets when the specialization is chosen. What if they pick Aurene? Unlock a new Guardian exclusive specialization to select your monthly responsibility traits. These will be added to the chore chart. Mesmer. <laughs> My son has a chore chart. He's nine. Mesmer. Chronomancers can now attune to past patches, changing their skills to the balance and scripting used during that time. Well, fortunately, they're completely overpowered and broken now, so they're not going to want to go back. Butterfly effects will soon return from their astounding seasonal migration. Necromancer. Necromancers can now move while defeated. <laughs> did anybody ever see that rant that Roy did where he talked about World v. World, they're just going to turn into a well and run around well killing everybody? <laughs> I'm reminded of that. Instead of reviving downed allies, necromancers now have the option to use their corpses to make extra minions. That was in Guild Wars 1. That's only fair. That's completely fair. I loved it when my allies went downstate in GW1 as a minion master. Ranger! Active pets now create waste that has to be cleaned up after under penalty of Tyrian law. You know what? I carry bags around with me. I can handle that. 
Rangers may now post adorable pictures of their active pets to guild chat. Oh, baby! Y'all are gonna get so many pics of Chip. Just the whole- anytime they try to say anything, just chip pick, chip pick, chip pick, just constantly. Revenant! Equipped legendary stances will now change or swap if the invoked legend tires of talking to you. You guys are going to get Bram stance in the expansion, and no one else will talk to you but Bram. And you'll just constantly be forced into Bram conversation. Look forward to it. Fixed a bug that could cause revenants to fail to exit the teleport state during unrelenting assault, leaving them trapped for a seeming eternity in the world between worlds. <laughs> Cue Loki. I've been falling for 30 minutes! Thief! Thieves in stealth are now allowed to leave the combat area and watch from afar as their party members fight the boss and then show up to collect their share of the loot like they were working hard the whole time. I, I mean, literally, they're called Thief. Their class fantasy is that they commit misdemeanors. Th this surprises no one. Thieves can now cheat in activities such as Basket Brawl, Crab Toss, Mersot Tennis, and Belcher's Bluff. They already were. Warrior. Warriors can now equip scepters, foci, and staves in either hand using the mace skill set. <laughs> Dual wield stabs, you're just like drum sticking people. Banners will no longer be leased for advertising space. Structured player versus player. Tournament winners now qualify upon death to be transformed into awakened by the mighty Palawa Joko. Finally, some incentive! All right, I'm going to stop holding back in PvP. World versus world. Fixed an aggro table bug that prevented gates from properly engaging attacking players. You know, I would love to see a bunch of people hacking at a gate, just like they're like, rah, rah, and then it just goes poof. And it just one-shot kills anyone on the other side. Just slams down on them. Like, they, they didn't realize it was a drawbridge-style gate. Wall movement speed has increased by 500%. Man, if you can't do math, that's terrifying. And these... These are your Guild Wars 2 April 1st, 2021 patch notes. And one more thing, since this is going up on YouTube, please know that from April 2nd to April 4th, they announced that Path of Fire would be 50% off through Amazon links. I do not know what that means, and I have not yet been able to get clarification. I have tried twice. Ah! So, if you're looking to buy Path of Fire, tomorrow. Please, you know, think of your best friend, Muckluck. Try the referral link in the description. If it doesn't tell you it's going to give you half off between April 2nd and April 4th, then backup plan. Check Amazon and peruse there. I'm not sure. I, I, I've tr I've, I'm trying to get clarification. I'll, uh, if I get a late response from them, I'll put it and I'll pin it in the comments down below. But that's the comments and that's the new current news. Happy April 1st, y'all.